Okay, what do we get? For white bread. <coughs> X squared times okay good times the derivative of cosine which is good plus oops times okay and so if we we're going to write that in simplest form what would you do? I mean, that's the answer, but just to clean it up. How do you write, like for example, this oh. this second term? You, you know how, to, what, what should the order be of the factors if you have a cosine and a 2 and an x? 2x cosine. Yeah, yeah. So, and I would always put, this is just my own prejudice, but I would always put the positive term first. So I would write this as 2x cosine x. And does that make sense? Do you, do you know why you'd want to do that? Why you want to put, you'd want to put the powers first and then the cosines? What's wrong with if I wrote it as 2 cosine x times x? Right, so then it's unambiguous, right? I mean, if, if you're careful, you can make that unambiguous, but a lot of times we're, you know, we want to write things in an abbreviated way, and so you always want to end with a trig function. So then you, then you know this is the cosine of x and not the cosine of x times x, right? Okay? So then the first one would just look like x squared sine x. Okay? No big deal. That's it. That's it. Okay, let's try another one. How about... So what's the difference this time? <coughs> and is it, is it is it a problem? Say it again. Subtraction. Okay. So I've got two terms. So what do I do when I'm, I'm taking a derivative of multiple terms? Individually. Just differentiate term by term. So we'll just take these one at a time. So what's the first, if I'm calculating y prime, what about this guy? So, say it again. Okay, so I could do it as 2x times negative sine x. Times 2, you said? 2, yeah. Okay, good. Derivative of 2x is just 2. Okay. Good. So there's our first term, and then we've got minus, and I'll circle that so we keep track of that one, minus. Okay, so 2, I'm here, 2 times cosine x. Oops. And, and we, I'm not saying that this is necessarily the way we want to do this, but I'm just going to write it out this way first, and then we'll look for a way that we could have made this easier. So I should put this in brackets probably. Okay. Plus times zero. Okay. So let's talk about a couple things here. So what about the derivative of this second one? We applied the, the product rule. Is that necessary? No. No. How come? You couldn't put that two. Yeah, okay, because two is a constant, right? So we don't <clears throat> we don't need or want to do it that way. We want to use the product and quotient rules as sparingly as possible, right? 
I have a constant of two out front, so what's our rule? If we're taking the derivative of a constant times something, we just leave the constant out front and differentiate the function. So we could have much more easily, in this case, just gotten the answer to cosine x without using product rule, right? Because the 2 is a constant, so we just ignore that, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't use, if the product involves a function and a constant, that's not product rule. Product rule is when we have a product of functions, right? Okay, the first one is fine. Is there anything we could have done a little differently on the first one? Okay, we could have, good. We could have done this, couldn't we? We could have said 2 times the product of x times cosine x. Now, the 2 is so easy to factor out in the end. I don't know if it's that big a deal. But then what that would mean is we would get 2 times the product rule applied to those two, right? So then that would have just looked like x times minus sine x plus cosine x, right? And then we just redistribute that 2 at the end. Okay? So what are we going to get for our final answer? Yeah, good. The cosines, the 2 cosine x will cancel with the minus 2 cosine x. And so we just get the answer negative 2x sine x. It did. We pulled the, the negative. You see what I'm saying? That negative, we want to pull that out with the coefficient. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. How about something like this? Yeah. How about. Okay. There's a little different notation. <clears throat> so this time we want to we want to differentiate. So this time we're writing the derivative as kind of an operator, right? We're going to do this, meaning differentiate to this stuff. So what rule are we going to use here? Explosion rule. Okay. All right. So, so we remember that. Quotient rule. Low D high minus high D low. Say it again. You sure? Okay. So what's so what's the first term in the numerator going to look like then? Okay. X squared plus one. I'm going to make that a quantity, obviously, right? Okay. Okay, and what is the derivative of 5x minus 2? 5. 5, yeah. Okay, so far so good. Questions? Okay, minus, and that's important, right? It's minus, it's not plus. Minus, what's the next term going to be? 5x minus 2. Times 2x. Everybody agree? The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 1 is 0. Okay. All divided by x squared plus 1 squared. Good. Okay. So then we would just have some cleanup to do. But that's, that's the calculus. And as I've already said a few times, and I'll say a lot more, the calculus is oftentimes not the hard part. Right, the hard part is going to be the algebra that precedes and follows the calculus. So, uh, so then what would we do here? On the top, what are we going to do? Okay, distribute 5, so we're going to get 5x squared plus 5 minus 10x squared. Be careful. Plus, good, because I'm have a minus times a minus 4x, okay, all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So on the top, 
we get what? 5x squared minus 10x squared is negative 5x squared plus 4x plus 5 over x squared plus 1 quantum squared. That's probably about all we can do. Right. No, you wouldn't. Okay, good, very good question. So on the bottom, would we want to expand that out? No, we don't. And for now, here's, here's the short explanation I'll give you. You'll see why in much more detail soon we start to use, we start to analyze the derivative functions. But we want things to be always factored as much as possible. Why? Because we want to find the zeros of both the numerator and the denominator. We've already seen some examples where that's useful, isn't it, right? The zeros of the top are places where we get x-intercepts. Zeros of the bottom are places where we get vertical asymptotes and shared zeros are holes, right? So we always, we want these things factored because we, we want to be able to use the fact that they're factored to find zeros, okay? So don't undo, that's, we lucked out there, it's already factored, right? Uh, okay, let's try another one. Okay, let's try something like this. Think about that now. As, as always, don't just jump in, right? And you're going to start to see that it really pays off in calculus to, to not just immediately jump in and start doing work. You want to look at this and digest it first and then decide what your strategy is going to be. So is this a quotient rule problem? No. It could be, but why? Because there's no, there's no function on the bottom of it, right? The quotient rule is for a quotient of functions. And this is not a quotient of functions. What can I do with that 6 on the bottom? Pull it out as a what? As a 1 6. Yeah, exactly. So we want to just at least think of this as being 1 6 times the quantity x squared plus 3x. So that 1 6 stays out front. And then we'll do some calculus in here. So what's the derivative of the first term? Second term? So that's our answer, isn't it? One sixth. And you could you could distribute the one sixth back if you wanted, but that's our that's our answer, right? If we distribute the one sixth, we just get what? X over three plus one half. Right? Okay, how about this? Is that a quotient rule problem? Sure looks like it, doesn't it? It is, but can we make it one that's not a quotient rule problem? Because if we can, we would we'd much rather do that. The quotient rule is kind of hard. There's a lot of, I mean, you have to do, there's a lot of stuff to do in the quotient rule. Lots of opportunities to make mistakes, to make things look complicated, and we got to go turn around and simplify it, right? So we'd prefer to always avoid it if we could. What could we do? Uh, meaning, when you take out an x, okay, so you're factoring an x out of the top, right? Okay, good. So that's one way we could think about this. We could factor an x out of the top and write the top as 3x times the quantity 3 minus. Uh, whoops, you're right. Sorry. Negative 3x times what's left over 3 minus 2x. Good divided by 7x, and let's just group those, right? And then what happens? Right, the x's cancel. Okay, and we end up with 
negative 3 sevenths times 3 minus 2x. Okay. Another way of doing that, another way of thinking about it, and I just want you to see this because I think it's really, you know, I think seeing how all this stuff really essentially means the same thing, but algebraically our approach could be slightly different. We could say, how about if we just pull the 7 out front, at least in our head, and then that's going to be multiplied by 3x minus 2x squared over x, right? And then we could just divide term by term, couldn't we? Split that into two fractions. Right, we've got a common denominator, but we could, at least in our head, we could write this as 3x over x minus 2x squared over x. And those are easily uh, simplified using the you know, our power or properties of exponents. Right? If we divide x by x, those cancel, and x squared over x just becomes an x up top, right? So either way, we end up with that, don't we? Right? And that's much easier to differentiate than a quotient rule. Okay? So what are we going to get if we calculate y prime then? We got our negative 3 sevenths. What's the derivative of 3 minus 2x? Negative 2. So our answer is just 6 sevenths. Okay. Much easier though, right? Then we don't have to go through that whole quotient rule concept. Okay. So simplify when you can. How about something like this? Quotient rule? No. Yeah, top's a constant. Good. So how could we write this in a way that's much easier to deal with? Good. So we can write it as 9 fifths, and then x to the 3 on the bottom is just x to the minus 3 on the top. Okay, and so now that's an easy derivative. What's y prime? Okay, so what's that? Negative 27 fifths times x to the negative 4. Good, negative 3 minus 1. So we get negative 27 over 5x to the 4th if we write it with positive exponents. Okay. One more, let's do for practice. How about something like, oh, this would be a good one, yeah, 3 minus 1 over x over matter. About that. Okay, so what's our thinking on this one? Stare at that for a second. We could take this at face value and just use the quotient rule, right? But if we do, we're going to end, look what's going to happen if we do. We're going to end up getting this expression 3 minus 1 over x and its derivative. We're going to end up getting those implanted in our answer, right? And so we're going to have to... We're going to have to get common denominators and you see what I'm saying? We're going to have to simplify no matter what. Do you see my point? I was attempting to not have to do the whole problem that way, and I won't, but let's at least write out what the derivative would be if we took this at face value and didn't do any pre-writing. Okay? So if we just differentiate, we're going to get y prime equals low, right, so x plus 5 times the derivative with respect to x of 
3 minus 1 over x, right? We won't even bother doing it. Minus the bottom, or minus, sorry, the top, times the derivative of the bottom, which is pretty easy, right? That's just going to be a, it's going to be a 1. Divided by bottom square. If I differentiate this, I am going to get another fraction, right? So I'm going to have to deal with both this term and this term simplifying, right? Wouldn't it be easier to just simplify it once and write it as a rational function, as a polynomial over a polynomial, right? See my point? We could take this original function, and how would I simplify the top to make that one big fraction? What would it look like? Everybody see that? 3x minus 1 over x, all divided by x plus 5, right? Which is equal to, if I flip and multiply by this, 3x minus 1 over x times x plus 5, right? Which is on the bottom then, what, x squared plus 5x? Okay, isn't that easier to deal with using the quotient rule? All right, see my point? So it pays here to do a little bit of work up front to avoid twice as much work simplifying afterwards. Okay? All right. That's probably pretty good for today. So I'll put up the assignments then for product and quotient rule stuff.